Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 171, Break Camel Case into Words. Well, this is a fascinating question. As soon as I saw this one, Mike, I said, oh, this would be great. This would be a great duel. Robert from YouTube said, uh, is there a way to split first and last names in a data dump that has no spaces? For example, Bill Jellen with a capital B, capital J, no space. All right, so basically what we want to do is data, text to columns, and have it split at the first second, I'm sorry, the second capital letter, second capital letter, isn't that crazy? I don't think the Power Query has anything like that, although I might be burned, it's possible. So here's what we know, uh, capital letter A is code 65, capital letter Z is 90, and then uh, 97 to 122. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for uh, where the the code of various elements, uh, various characters in that string is between 65 and 90. And while there might be a formula that would do the mid of, you know, from one to the the row of the one to the, the length of the whole thing, I am just switching right over to VBA uh, and wrote a nice little function here called uh, equal find cap. I'm going to pass it some text and tell it which capital I'm looking for. If I don't specify which capital I'm looking for, then I'm going to assume I'm looking for the first one. Oh, in those, this case, I'm really looking for the second one. Uh, figure out how many I found for i equals 1 to the length of my text. Look at this character, uh, the ask of this character, ASC. That's the ASCII code. It's funny, in Excel it's code equal code, but here in VBA it's ASC. Uh, and then check and see what character we get. If it's between 65 and 90, then we'll increment the number of caps found. If, you know, so the first time B and Bill is going to give us uh, one caps found. J and Jellin is going to give us a second caps found. If what we found is what we're looking for, then I just return whatever position we're on in the loop uh, and exit the function. All right, so check this out. Equal find cap in that text, comma 2. It is in the seventh place. It says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There we go. Double click to copy that down. And then it becomes a simple matter of equal left of here, comma, the fine cap minus one, which would get us the first name. And then the equal mid of the original text, comma, starting in that position, comma. I'm just going to ask for a huge number. And I uh, know that we'll get out to the end. All right, so there you go, Mike. I am uh, just falling back to VBA. Let me know if you have a way to deal with this. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Fall back to VBA. At least you have VBA to fall back to. I love the fine cap. Totally awesome. But I'm stuck with doing formulas. All right, let's come over to this sheet right here. Now, when I look at this, I see two caps. And you know what? I don't want to mess around with two caps. I only want one cap in my text string to have to look through. So I'm first going to remove that first cap letter. So I'm going to use the right. I'm going to say, hey, go get from the right, comma, how many characters? Well, if I gave it the length of all of that, it would get all of the characters. I'm just going to subtract one. Boom, and that got rid of that first cap letter. Now. The next thing I want to do is actually create a list of all the capital letters that I might encounter, A to Z cap. Mr. Excel used code to go from letter to number. I'm going to use the complement to that or the opposite of that, the character. This will go from a number, 65, to the letter. Now to create this list, I'm going to instead say 64, that's one before and then add row. Now row function just looks at the particular row, one, two, three, so that'll work. It'll increment and add one as we go down. I'm going to, this formula here is temporary. We'll delete it after we use the letters. Double click and send it down. And there we have our letters. Now, I was thinking about this and I was like, what functions can actually look at capital letters? Well, there certainly is upper, right? Well, that just changes everything to an upper. I don't want that. There's exact. Exact actually compares two text strings. That's case sensitive. But wait a second. The one we can use is find. Find and search will do exactly what we want. Search through here and find the position of a particular character, but check out find. Case sensitive. So that's exactly what we want. Now find text. 
You usually put one thing in here, but I'm going to give it a bunch of things. Control Shift down arrow, Control Backspace to jump back to the active cell. Now, I don't want those cell references, so I'm going to click on the screen tip and hit F9 to evaluate. Now, if I left it like this, it would violate Excel's golden rule, right? You're not supposed to hard code things into formulas, except if the things you're hard coding will never change. And guess what? I can't think of a better example than letters in the alphabet. Those are never going to change. So I'm just going to leave it like that. I'll delete this E column in just a second. Now, that's a function argument array operation. Find will actually find something for every one of those items, comma, and I'm going to say within this cell right here, close parentheses. Now again, that's a function argument array operation. It tells find to spit out a bunch of answers. So if I highlight an F9, there's all my answers. There's the six I'm after. Now, when we get value errors or errors like this, that'll mess up most functions. If I put min or max or sum or some aggregate function to try and get at that 6 there, the value error would just mess it up. Now, I could use aggregate, which avoids error, control Z, but I'm actually going to go way back and use lookup. Now, lookup is amazing. It'll do horizontal lookup, vertical lookup. It will not see those errors, meaning it'll just skip over them, and it can handle array operations like this without Control Shift Enter. The only trick is if I comma this lookup vector, that's what I'm looking up. What in the world do I need as a lookup value? Well, I just need to put some big number. So the some big number I'm going to put is 2 to the 15th. Why 2 to the 15th? Because Excel allows, as a max number of characters, 32,767. And 2 to the 15th is one more than that. So that will work perfect. You've got to be kidding me. Watch this. Enter. And we have a 6. Now we need to plus 1, because we actually want the 7th position. And that formula will work all the way down. Now I want to mash it all together. So see, B2 is pointing right there. So I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape. Come over here, double click, Control-V, Control-Enter. That will work. Now I'll delete this. And I'm going to point to the edge and hold Shift and drag it over. And so that will work all the way down. Now, to get the first, I'm simply going to use just like Mr. Excel did, left. Give me the left of this comma. And I want 7, but that'll give me one too many. So I subtract one, close parentheses. Thomas. So that got me Thomas. Now, for last, I'm going to use the replace function. Replace, there's the old text comma, the start position of characters to replace. I'm starting at 1. Comma, how many characters do I want? Well, I need to add 6. So I'm going to say 7 minus 1. That'll give me the first 7 characters. Comma, and then replace says, what do you want to put in its place? Double quote, double quote. That's the syntax for show nothing. Control Enter. Now I can highlight these, double click, and send it down. Wow, that is wild. A bunch of cool stuff. Throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, wow, Mike. I thought you were going to go with uh, mid and indirect and row and do some magic there, but instead, completely different direction with look up, find, right, len. Not to mention character and row to generate the letters and that great trick with 2 to the 15th minus 1. I love these duels. We come up with so many different ways to uh, do this. What a great formula there. Uh, boy, it'd be nice if there was really just a, uh, a faster, easier way. But here we are. All right. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun. It's Dueling Excel time.